be a bit careful with this uh, when we're doing this. So like Cloud, he's very much, if you look at his ears, they're always on me. We're about to move off. He's on me now waiting for his first instruction. He will not move until I give him an instruction, which way, or a request, I'll sooner call it. So a little pony standing there. So Cloud, if you look at the pole, I've got the pole about with Cloud's collar, yeah? Obviously, it's going to come over this all. You've got to be careful you don't bump him or hurt him with this great lump of metal going up between them, isn't it? So I just asked him, Cloud, come round, darling. So I see him just push the pole gently and bring the little fella around. And this is only his second time up alongside. Oh. Okay. All right, Cloud. So see me all snarry, just walk like that. And now you can see them bungees doing their job, can't you? So that's why I'm saying the tension, getting the tension on them right is quite great. We don't want it any tighter, do we, obviously, because you can make him sore. You know, um, you could use one bit of bungee without the knot on the back and people say, why have you got that knot there? Because I want to see these quarters move, you know. Now I'm not, um, I've, I should have said then, I've just sent a message down the rain. If you look at my little finger, when I do that with clouds, three of them means trot slowly, yeah, the cloud. You know, my schoolmaster. He's not my horse, actually. He's also a friend of mine. Beautiful horse. Lovely horse. Absolutely, you know, do anything I ask him to do. He's been with me a long time now. Um, the chap had a bit of a problem with his shoulder. And uh, it's taken a long time to get it right. So he spent his time with me and ended up, rather than just use him occasionally, We've turned him into a schoolmaster. So also what I've done is lengthened the pole chain. You can see on the little pony. Yeah. And I've adjusted my reins. Now on my reins, on the billet of the rein on my reins, um, I have several holes. I think there's, there's five holes in there. So there's five positions that I can put the bit in without altering my coupling rein, yeah? So I can take it up, let it out. So I've still got, as you can see, reasonably well here. I've still got control on both their mouths, yeah? Not that I need much on cloud at all, but we've got a big old thing coming past now. It, lovely. There's other things I want you to notice here that he's not taking any solace at all from Cloud. So from the near side also the schoolmaster, the little pony, is really not very much interesting. He's not looking for leadership from Cloud. You look at the traces, they're all tight, he's doing his fair amount of work. This is only his second time in. But obviously we study them and do the groundwork we want to do before. But you can see that he's relaxed. He is not perfectly relaxed. He's relaxed, but he's not as relaxed as I would like him to be. So his ears are forward. Right? His body is not tight. But if you look, it's quite a bit of his tail between them ox, yeah? Which obviously must mean that his tail his dock is coming down and got a slight curve on it where it could be out there more. So if you look at Cloud's tail for instance and the little chaps, now that could well be and why shouldn't it be them very bungees we've been talking about but it's obviously not anywhere near enough um, maybe just what's that? What's that? Feels a bit funny, that's what he's saying but he's never it's only his second time in, so he's had it on. It's not like he's been driven without it, then put on. So there's the tail come out. See what I'm saying? 
So he's just relaxed now. He's got his ears back and he's listening to me and what I'm saying. Forward again. Watch this now. He'll have. I think we've got a motor car coming up behind. And I think, yes, it, can you see the ears moving individually, right? So he can hear something behind. He's not concerned by it. He's not upset by it. But he'll have one ear forward, one ear back. So he's picking up information from this motor car coming here. He's got one behind. And he's trying to pick up all the information he can, which is beautiful, which I want him to do. Which that shows you exactly... And under normal circumstances when I'm training, I wouldn't be talking like I am now, I'm trying to talk. Like you saw there, you had one ear forward, one ear back, yeah? And if you look now, one ear is very much on me and the other one followed that motor car. So he's offside here, followed the motor car to get as much as information as he could. Yep. But his tail's just gone back in again, right? There's a little black dot on the road there he's seen and this white chalk. Can you see? Right, so I, I could... I can't turn his head. I wanted to turn his head then to show you. Let him look at it again. But he looked at that white chalk and thought, what's that doing there? What's that? So the smallest of things can take their attention. The smallest of things. I mean, we okay, so someone's dropped a coat, a jacket, a jumper, a shirt, something, you know, whatever, in the road. A piece of paper, cardboard, anything. And watch this look. And that is because um, this pony was ridden, I should, should have told you that, by the little lassie, you know, and the pony's all right with traffic. So you say, well, well, what you even mentioned it for, because he's got blinkers on now, we're just taking 80% of his vision away. 80% of his vision is gone when you put blinkers on. Um, so that can be unnerving in itself. So there's all these things to remember. And when you see something, it's quite amusing really, because when he sees something, he likes to have a look at it, and then it's almost like, you know when you get a piece of paper and you're trying to read it and move it back like that? Um, it's almost like that, as though he's got to move his head back to get, a, you know, get, the, get it in sight, got to focus, I should say, you know. I know he isn't, but that's what he looks like. So, yeah, lovely, lovely little pony. I mean, a pretty pony of his type. Got a lot of feather on his legs. And he's a pretty pony, a little tiny gypsy cob. But there you are, see there? So he's going up like that. Now, that's, I'm not worried about that at all, that's good. He's going up like that. Now, what's that about? Well, he come round that bend and he's got a rise. You know, the road rises up a little bit, yeah? So he thinks, oh, I need to... So under normal circumstances, if there was... If he lived in a, on a, in a field where there was a hill or a hummock, you know, he would, he would trot up it, wouldn't he? And that's what he thought he had to do. It's funny, isn't it? Really funny. So he thinks that's what he's got to do. So I'll trot up here. Now, in a minute, he'll, this type of, this type, if you can put him into types at all, this little fella will be funny because it won't be long before he starts without me giving him any instruction, without me giving him any rain, you know, at all, keeping my hands dead still. See this little slope we're going down now, which is a tiny little slope, right? You hardly see it on the film, but it's a little slope. Within three days, I would guess, somewhere like that, he'll be sitting in the britching. And what he'll do, he'll overdo it. So he overdone it when he thought he had to canter up the hill, right? Because you haven't, you know, Cloud will do all the work. You haven't really, all you've got to do is keep your traces tight. Cloud will do the work for you. Um, but you don't know that yet, does he? It's all brand new. The other thing is, um, I can't tell anyone how to break horse and I never would, or train horse, whatever you want to call it. Just for me, we've got to go a reasonable distance. Now, what would that be? Well, this one we're going to do now is about six miles we're going to do, five or six miles. Bear in mind he's already ridden, he's reasonably fit, so it's not really a problem, yeah? The distance, and we can walk, we can trot, we can do. Remember, Cloud's doing the work. So all he's carrying, he's not even carrying his little 
um, owner on his back, he's carrying about 40 pound of varnish. So he's not doing any work at all really. So he's a real nice little chap, you know, I mean he is lovely. But any any horse that you know you've got to be aware of, of what you're doing if you I believe we need to do, otherwise we won't be doing it, we need to do about these six miles, right? We don't need to work hard at it, but we need to cover the ground and get some miles on the clock. Because if we don't, with this dear little chap, if we don't get the miles on the clock, he could take a step backwards quite easily. It's like if he had to lose time now, that's why we're so... Um, you know, we try and advise people to get their wolf teeth done um, to get them shod before they come. I mean, our farrier will shoe them, you know, green horses, does it all the time. But if they're done, we don't lose any time trying to marry the farrier up when, we, when the, you know, it's ready. You know, I'm waving this, this, this little motorbike on there because this is lovely. Beautiful motorbike. That's a very, very good thing at this very early stage for him to hear that. I'm not saying he's never heard one when the little lash has been riding him, but they do make a bit of a noise. A bit unusual, a bit different from other motorbikes. So he's taking that. Now what he's doing now, these paddocks across here, oh, a lot of young horses out there, young show jumpers, dressage horses, etc. And he'll be picking up the smell off them paddocks. So he's got his ears up saying, well, where are you? Then I can smell you, but I don't know. They're not in there today, as it happens. But obviously they've been in there. They're going to leave their smell behind them. So he'll be wanting to see what that's all about. So again, if you look and learn, the has gone between the legs. Yeah. Anything will put his tail between his legs. If you can read all and it will come out again once he's settled a bit. He has got a great big full tail and to a certain extent it will be caught up in there because of the width of his ox. But after that, he can bring it out. And there he's just gone again now. A little jump forward. We can't say what that is or what's caused that or anything. But he, in my opinion, what he's done is said, can I go any faster? Remember, this is his second time in a vehicle, right, pulling a vehicle. So he just went, can I go any faster then? No, he can't, because he's got his collar in front of him, so he's got, what he's got to do is, and as I've said this a thousand times, and people think I'm being splitting airs, I'm not at all, it's a very important thing. Horse does not pull a cart. Right, he seriously doesn't pull a cart. If he pulled a cart, we'd tie it on his tail, wouldn't we? He'd tie his tail up on these rails and he could pull it. What he does is push the collar forward, which in turn brings the cart forward. So, as he goes in, and he thinks, oh, I can't, I want to trot, I want to gallop, I want to canter, I can't, because I've got this. So, we just keep quiet, we do it nice and gentle, let him have a couple of little bursts. He'll have another one before the day's out. Before this trip's out, he might have two or three. I don't mind. I will not pull on his mouth to stop him. I'll talk to him if I've really got to. Rather than that, I won't even talk to him about it, you know? Because he's just learning. Yeah. So he wants to shoot forward and he's got to learn. I can't do that because I'm secured to this vehicle. So if I go forward... This vehicle's got to go forward, and this vehicle will be heavy for him <laughs> on his own. So he's got to do. But if the other thing is, well, all the time I've been talking, he's still come off of me. I watch it. The next, you know, and he's put his ears forward, and he's, you know, he's been reasonably happy. Boy. Um, but he's not looking to cloud for anything at all. He's not touching him with his head. He's not, you know, putting his lips over. Cloud's just told him then, don't come over here. This is my space. You keep away, yeah? 
I just turned his head that way and cloud. So here now, see cloud, look, just put his head back, went, oh, don't come over here. You know? And that's good because this time he's set back and cloud head is, cloud's head is forward. So therefore, he can, he can see cloud's head. Cloud can't see his head coming over towards him but he knows by the tension on the rain that he's just moved over a bit you know he's got these reins on his back he, he you know schoolmasters like dear old Rowley and Bentley many many years ago before that and you know come up then Reeves little pony George you know good schoolmaster little mare funny enough I'd never have a mare as a schoolmaster only for their seasons that's all because sometimes they can be a bit upset with that but yeah it's a proper schoolmaster and uh, at the moment it's not at work and we've got this one in which would have been um, so here we've got a golden opportunity come up there Cloudy that'll do Cloud now just stand still so we can have this move past us quite fast and that will be good, yeah. And I'm going to stay here because I've got a car behind me, so we just will let that go while we're doing it, which is all good training. I don't want this little pony moving its quarters out towards the car. Now you say to me, well, if it's, it's you know, if it's already been ridden, it'll be fine. It don't work like that. Because as I've said to you, it's 80% the vision's gone. You certainly can't look behind him. So therefore, you've got to have a lot of trust in what I'm, you know, my hands, what I'm saying to him. Um, and he's got to be pretty confident in himself and his own ability. So we're learning so much about this little horse. You know, if you want to learn. So here, look, this one. Not a murmur. Ear just went up. See, the ear just went up just to listen to it. You know, that's it. See if there's anything special about it. Not anything in the pony's opinion. And the pony's come over there to just put his over there. That one about that's not a very good move with Cloud because he'll tell you off. But he's had up me, Cloud's had happened to be going the other way. So, so many things I'm watching all the time. And, you know, you learn about these dear little creatures. You know what I mean? And he's lovely, isn't he? Dirty Harry. So, there you go. We'll finish that one out. Hope you find that interesting. And if you've got any, stand still, darling baby boy. There's good lad. Sorry, my fault. If you could share this video, be lovely. You know, so if you believe in what we do, because they only ever wear rubber bits, even Cloud there, although he's got this thing stuck in there, it's only because when he has them green uh, guards on, like the little pony's got, stand baby, that little green guard, can you see? cheek guard if you put them on on cloud it takes the pigment out of your skin <laughs> so it gets big pink licks all around you know so but the only he's only got rubber in his mouth the same as any other and that's all they have a soft piece of rubber and we train them in that in the heaviest of traffic and under every situation you just look at the other films and you'll see so subscribe um like and share i'd really appreciate that it takes a lot of time to make these films and a lot of effort to do it you know especially well, for Ray, not for me but for Ray to do so you know if you'd like share and subscribe okay walk on my babies shop darlings that's my babies come on sugar up you go there's a good baby